Skyrim is an incredible game, with a lot to explore, but I think the reason thousands of people are able to continue to play it after nearly 10 years is down to the mods. I've taken some time to put together various mod packs that will reflect certain characters and playstyles, starting with the Ranger pack. I've taken a focus on survival and hunting for this pack, which is what most of the mods will reflect. To try and break all the mods up a bit, they have been split into three sections, which can be skipped to on the timeline. Core mods are the fundamental mods that the entire pack is built around. Gameplay and additions are mods that alter the flow of the game and add in new locations or creatures. Finally, cosmetic contains mods that change appearances or add in new items. I haven't featured many of my graphics or quality of life mods, but may make a video covering them in the future. I also have the pack's entire load order in the description if you would like to see that. At the end of the video, I'm going to go over some of the mods that conflict with one another, so be sure to watch that bit before downloading so you aren't hit with unexpected bugs. With all that out of the way, let's get into the mods. The first mods I've got are Campfire and its add-ons. Campfire adds camping mechanics to the game, allowing you to create fires in the wilderness for cooking and warmth. There are also a range of basic wilderness survival skills given, and some craftable items added in to enhance the experience of travelling through Skyrim. The mod comes with an add-on called Frostfall, which adds temperature and wetness as survival mechanics, making certain areas of the map very dangerous to travel for prolonged periods. You are able to use different types of armour and clothing to help with protection from the cold, as well as some spells. This is the first mod that will bring the survival element to this mod pack, so I would highly recommend taking the Frostfall add-on. There are three more add-ons that I've tried for Campfire. These are less essential for the pack, but are still quite good. The first is Cutting Trees. It's the most simple addition, allowing you to use an axe or hatchet to chop some wood manually from trees. Then there is the Camper's Workbench. This adds in much more advanced workstations for you to use at your campsite. Things like smelteries and anvils. It's a good addition, and can allow you to function in the wilderness without ever needing a house, but I've found it can be a bit overpowered, and sometimes it feels like it defeats the point of a survival playthrough, so use at your own discretion. Finally is the Primitive Shelters add-on. This offers some more basic shelters to the game, like simple bivouacs. Then it also adds in the far more advanced yurt to use. It's an extremely good shelter, but once again it can throw off balance. I find it's not too much of a problem, and if you're someone who would find it an issue, you could add self-imposed rules to address balancing. For example, I don't allow myself to pick up advanced crafting stations or shelters once they've been placed. Also, although it's not really an add-on, there is a graphics mod I use that improves the textures of some of the things included in Campfire, like backpacks and perk trees. Next is the mod I Need, which adds in hunger, thirst and tiredness, helping to round out the survival experience. This of course adds a new level of value to hunting and makes resource management an important part of travelling. I have a couple of patches and expansions to the mod on screen, the most important being Dangerous Diseases, which makes disease far more deadly and much more difficult to cure. Then we have Hunterborn, which completely changes how harvesting animals works, making it take longer and feature more options. There are also some new materials that can be used to create some basic items like bone weapons and jewellery. This is the mod that pretty much led to me creating this entire pack. It makes hunting animals into something that's actually rewarding and fun so I would definitely recommend installing it. Moving on from the core mods, we have the mods that add something extra to the world and make some changes to gameplay. These mods are still big and game-changing, but aren't as essential to the pack. They are really just mods I use to flesh out the experience of playing as a wandering ranger. If they're only in this section that don't seem like your thing, then cutting them out of your load order won't be too detrimental to your playthrough. The first mods I have here will be affecting combat with Know Your Enemy, Wildcat, and Archery Overhaul. 
These mods make combat more engaging and offer the players more choice in fighting styles. Know Your Enemy in particular rewards using a variety of weapons. I found myself making notes as I played through to keep track of what weapons worked well against what enemies, so that I could be more effective in future fights. And honestly it was a lot of fun, but of course this is the sort of thing that could only work on your first playthrough with the mod, because after a few goes of it you're going to remember what works. Wildcat also makes stamina drain far quicker, and makes it more of a problem when it's empty, which helps make certain food and potion types more useful in general combat. The archery overhaul also makes some changes to the game, making archery and arrow flight more realistic. This pack is going to incentivize traveling and exploring in the wilderness a bit more, so I've also picked a couple of mods to add new things to discover and interact with. The first mod worth mentioning is one that I actually didn't end up using, called Beasts of Tamriel. It's a very good mod, and fits well with the pack. It also works with Hunterborn, unlike most mods that add in animals but it's very unstable, and can cause a lot of crashes. The crashes are location based, so you can learn to avoid them, but this is the reason I didn't use it when playing this mod pack, so it's up to you if you want to do the same. When it comes to adding creatures, there are a lot of options, but I didn't want to add any wildlife that wouldn't work with Hunterborn, which rules out quite a lot of them. In the end, the mods I've gone for mainly add in one-off boss-like creatures, or enemies that aren't animals, and as such don't mess with Hunterborn. I've gone for Mihail's Ancient Skeletons and Mihail's Old Gods of the Hunt, which add some more powerful skeletons, and a large Leshen based on the Wood Elf stories of the Great Hunt. This is an immensely powerful enemy located near Falkreef, with a recommended level of 40, making it a good challenge to build up to. I accidentally ran into it at about level 10, and everything about it is just massively intimidating. It summons swarms of crows and wolves to seek you out, and it's an extremely big and powerful creature itself. In the end I had to run away. Then I added legendary creatures, which brings in a set of new boss creatures spread throughout the world. They are a sort of fun one-off boss, much like the Leshen, but won't really appear very often. An option I used for a bit was Mihail's Cockatrice, which is a large flying creature. These can appear quite frequently, and are a challenging and unique fight. As much as I would recommend trying this mod, as they are a cool foe to face, they appear too frequently to use for too long. I personally removed the mod after fighting three of them back to back. Finally are Diverse Dragons and Talkative Dragons which add in new types of dragons, and feature dialogue to make the encounters more interesting. The new dragon types are highly varied and fun to fight, with things like the poison dragon and the ether dragon offering new damage types. As well as new creatures, I've got a few mods that add to the environment throughout Skyrim, starting with immersive hold borders, which add military checkpoints along the roads at the edges of each hold. They are manned with guards, and can make travelling the roads more dynamic, and more problematic if you have a bounty on you. I've also included Obsidian Weathers and Seasons, to make the world feel more visually interesting as you travel through it. This isn't usually my first pick for weather mods, but it has the advantage of being 100% compatible with Frostfall, meaning that the storms and blizzards will make travelling extremely dangerous at certain times, and force you to react to the weather in order to survive. I've also used a mod called Place of Power, which simply makes the 13 standing stones more interesting locations to travel to and search for. With all of these mods in place, Skyrim is a more interesting location to explore, but I also wanted a quest mod that could feature some new locations, and I think that Worm's Tooth fits perfectly. It's got its own story and voice acting, taking you to a new island with lots of locations and side quests to do. The main reason I chose Worm's Tooth for a ranger survival pack is because the island features much harsher weather, making it a far tougher place to travel through when using Frostfall. It makes the place feel like a challenge, and if you go there at the recommended level of 10, you will find it quite hazardous. The weather can get so extreme in unexpected ways that during my first visit to the island, I had to stand in a burning building just to avoid freezing to death. 
To try and fit with the ranger aesthetic, I've added the mod Cloaks and Capes, giving a lot of craftable options for the player. The main reason I chose this over the wealth of alternatives is because the cloaks work completely with Frostfall, and NPCs such as guards and bandits will spawn wearing random or specialised cloaks. I think this helps make the people feel less out of place when the weather mods bring on blizzards and storms. With this being Skyrim, I themed my ranger character around being a dragon hunter, which was another thing that led me to choosing Worm's Tooth. But I've also featured Konarik's Accountraments, which adds more dragon priest masks and a quest line set around them. Then I've used the Warmonger Armory mod to give the ability to attach the masks to your belt, allowing you to gain their effects without having to wear them. This means you can have the perks of multiple masks at once, as well as it just looking cool. While alchemy isn't something I've focused on much with this pack, I do have one mod that overhauls it. The mod Tonics and Toxins changes how potions function, making them slightly less overpowered, and buffs the effect of food, making it more useful. The mod adds in all new types of potions that can completely change how you play, and you will spawn with a set of books that go over what's available and how they can be crafted. The potions are cool, but the main reason I use this mod is because its food buff is really good. I think it strikes the balance of making food relevant whilst not making it too overpowered. To complement this improvement to food, I also have the mod Save the Salt, which removes the salt pie ingredient from a few recipes in the game. Finally, we have the Skyrim Fishing mod, which can make obtaining fish much easier and safer. Normally, you could just swim to collect fish, but with Frostfall, this is very dangerous. I didn't want to mention too many mods in this pack that don't fit the theme, but I do have a couple of quality of life mods that I think will enhance the experience of playing a ranger character. First of all is Alternate Start, allowing you to swap the opening in Helgen for something more suited to your character. Then we have Imperius, making your racial abilities more relevant and giving you unique quests based on what race you play as. We also have Vokri, Perks of Skyrim, which is a lightweight perk overhaul, making skill investment more rewarding. Finally, I have some mods to alter the economy of the game. The goal here was to try and make crafting your own equipment using resources you collect yourself more beneficial instead of buying the things you need to make tools. So I'm using the Economy and Crime mod, which essentially makes everything more expensive and will generally reduce how much gold you have. This is really down to personal taste, but I think this mod helps support the idea of living alone in the wilds. With affording a house becoming a much less realistic idea in the early game, making the survival mechanics even more of a danger. Then we also have better pelt prices. This counters the economy decrease exclusively for pelts, making hunting one of the few things in the game that will give some good gold. So the third category of mod I have are cosmetics. These are mainly just new items or small location changes. The first mod for this is Skyrim Outfitter, which features a variety of armour and weapon styles that can be crafted throughout the game. This mod also comes with craftable pouches that can be used to increase carry capacity, which leads me on to an additional pouch mod you might find yourself wanting, Bandolier. The two mods do work with each other, so you can have both, but you'll find your tanning rack menu becomes very cluttered. Of the two, I think that the bandolier pouches look a lot better, and are more noticeable when playing, but mechanically the Outfitters version has a bit more to offer. If you are low on space, then you will want to drop bandolier, assuming you wish to keep the other items added with Skyrim Outfitters. Then we have the Nordic Fur Armor, which adds in a set of Sabercat Fur Armor. The main benefit of this armor set over others is that it is considered highly warm by Frostfall, making it a good armor for traveling. I've found that because Sabercat pelts are quite rare, collecting enough to create this armor makes a good hunting challenge. Then for weapon sets, there's the Ranger Weapon Pack and the Hunter's Carved Arsenal. You only need one of these, because stats-wise they are both equal to Ebony Gear. It's down to personal preference on the look. 
My choice is the Hunter's Carved Arsenal. These mods add in a set of powerful steel weapons that look a bit nicer for you to use. They can be a bit overpowered because they have ebony stats, but can be crafted as soon as you can create steel items. It's up to you if that's a problem or not. I personally don't allow myself to use weapons like this until I've found or am able to craft another weapon of equal stats. The benefit it leaves me with is that I can craft these more powerful items with cheaper resources, making them more attainable even after the nuke I dropped on my economy with the earlier mods. Next I've got the Gondorian Ranger Pack, which is a good armour set inspired by Lord of the Rings, and to accompany it I also use the mod Strider's Sword. This brings in the blade Aragorn wields prior to receiving the reforged Narsil. As well as that is the Bosma Armour Pack, which brings some really well designed wood elf armour, bows and short swords. I would recommend using it if you're playing that sort of character. If you're the sort of person who likes to travel with followers, then the Falkyrie for Ranger Follower is a good pick for this sort of build. Although they do come with some pretty powerful gear, so if you don't want them to steal all your kills you will probably want to hold off until at least level 20. Finally I have two mods focused on making archery more visually pleasing. The scoped bows mod allows you to add crosshairs to your bows, making the aiming seem more immersive. An alternative to this would be the ranger's call, which features scoped bows along with a few other features like specialist arrows. But personally I think the design of the scopes and the way crafting them is integrated is done better in this mod. The next mod is actually the first mod I ever downloaded for Skyrim, it's called Belt Fastened Quivers. This is a small change simply moving the location of your quiver. Back quivers aren't very realistic, especially when travelling, but this mod makes things more accurate, and I think that the draw animation looks nicer after the change. So that's the entire pack. Before I end the video I'm going to go over some of the conflicts that may occur when using this pack. First of all is the Dangerous Diseases add-on for I Need. As part of the mod, the Cure Disease potion is removed in favour of new ones, and while the new ones are still added, the mod Tonics and Toxins prevents the old ones from being removed. This leads to Cure Disease potions existing in the game that don't do anything. The same issue occurs with the Healing Beverage added by Primitive Shelter, they can still be crafted but won't work. This isn't really an issue because there are replacements, it just means there are some useless items in the game that you'll have to be wary of. Or maybe you can collect them, I don't know. Then we have Hunterborn, which adds in some entirely new food items, which won't gain benefits from Tonics and Toxins food buff, and as such will be less valuable for anything besides warding off hunger. Also, when using alongside I Need, the mod will ask you to confirm what these food items are, as it won't recognise them automatically. This will only happen once each time you find a new food item, and it's pretty straightforward, so not really an issue, but worth mentioning. Thanks for watching, this is a slightly new area of content for me, so I'd love to hear any feedback. Next I'm planning on making a mod pack for either a barbarian or a monk character, so be sure to comment which one you'd like to see first.